Asta versus Donatio was even more of a one-sided fight than I ever thought it would be, as Asta was not only able to completely counter both of the Paladin's magic attributes, but slash through him in a matter of seconds. And keep in mind, Asta did all of this in his base form. Not only did he not activate his double union, which I thought he would need to fight against a Paladin this powerful, but he didn't even need to use his dark form. Meaning that in just a few days since the last time we saw him, our favorite monolith magic knight has become immensely more powerful. Because keep in mind, he had to activate his double union when facing off against Sister Lily and the Beast Paladin back in chapters 348 and 349. And while we don't know exactly how powerful the Beast Paladin was compared to the others, we can assume those gifted with the magic of a supreme devil would be considered higher tier paladins. So, to be able to go from having to use a transformation in order to defeat a high tier paladin in chapter 349, to being able to one shot a much more powerful one while still in base just 17 chapters later, is insane growth. But when you're training with characters who the fandom is still arguing to this day on whether individually they could have been the king of devils, this kind of power up in such a short amount of time is to be kind of expected. Though, to be fair to Dominatio, we do have to take into account that going into this fight, he was at a complete disadvantage, as both of his magic attributes were going to be completely useless against Asta, even in base, and in a clash of swords, Dominatio had no hope of winning. I mean, I figured at the very least, as a paladin, he would be fast enough that the only way Asta would be able to keep up with him would be to go into double union, but even Asta's speed in base has gained a major boost. Now, it's not 100% clear if Dominatio is down for the count at the end of this chapter, but if he does manage to get back up in the next one, then his only real hope of winning is going to be him taking all the wounded Black Bolt's hostage, forcing Asta to stay his hand in order for him to be able to escape, but Dominatio is just way too prideful to ever run, so he'll just end up screwing even that chance up by trying to attack Asta, leaving himself wide open to be taken down once again. Speaking of which, let's talk about that cut Asta hits him with at the end of the chapter, because I can imagine that some fans might get confused on how Asta only did one slash when he was using two swords, and if he killed Donati or not. Okay, so first, while yes, Asta is using two swords in this chapter, he only uses one to attack the Paladin, the Demon Slasher Sword, while the Demon Destroyer Sword is simply there just to use its upgraded causality break to negate the atmosphere magic Domnatio was throwing at him. Which, speaking of, that slow walk towards Domnatio that Asta did might have been one of the coldest moments we've ever seen from him, going right up there with him casually tanking a punch from Wilson Furrow after activating his True Devil Union. And it was almost definitely a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure reference, which is even cooler when you stop and think about the fact that both series feature an overpowered villain who has the ability to stop time. Which, now that we're bringing up Lucius, this chapter really makes me wonder how does Asta stack up against him now? Because going back to their first fight, Asta wasn't doing too bad against him. Sure, he couldn't land a solid hit on him, but he was keeping up with him pretty well, and Lucius was only able to land a hit on Asta after distracting him by turning Sister Lily into a paladin. So, going off that fight, it seemed like back then the two were pretty even, just like it seems in his fight against Yuno. But the question then becomes, was Asta fighting a clone of Lucius like Yuno was? And are the clones as powerful as Lucius or are they only a fraction of his true power? Personally, I believe the latter, only so when it comes to the final battle against the fourth Sograda sibling, we can use his overwhelming power as an excuse to have Yuno, Asta, and Noel all three team up to take him down. But if his max power is what we've seen in this fight against Asta and Yuno, then Asta alone at this point should be able to take him down, especially once he activates his true double union. And Asta might not even have to go that far, because even if he can't beat Lucius alone, it's implied in this chapter that him and Ichika make a pretty great team, as she sadly is the only member of the Reason 7 who actually made the journey with Asta and Finral back through the door of destiny, not only so she can reunite with her brother, Superhero, but because her and Asta seemingly have worked out some kind of combo ability. I mean, it's implied that he tested the ability out with each of the Reasons, and Ichika is the one that it was most compatible with, as of now, we have no clues as to what that ability is, but we can assume it's Zen related, so I'm extremely excited to see what it ends up being. Which actually brings me back to the second part of the confusing things I brought up earlier, which I almost completely forgot about, and that is whether or not Asta killed Donatio. And the short answer is no, I don't think so, because while I'm sure Asta is less than fond of the man even before he became a paladin, he still knows that he's being controlled by Lucius, so he wouldn't just outright kill him despite everything he's done so far. No, more than likely he just cut away the control Lucius had over him, similar to how he did with Sister Lily. Though admittedly, his slash on Dominatio in this chapter was much more severe than the one in chapter 349, so I do get where the question is coming from, but still, no, I don't think Asta killed him. In fact, I don't think Asta even killed the Beast Paladin back in chapter 348, 
The only Paladin I think we have confirmed to be dead so far is Heath, and that doesn't even really matter because he died originally back in like chapter 9 or something, and Asta wasn't even the one that killed him, it was Yosuka. So I think going forward, we can kinda apply this rule when it comes to the Paladins losing. Any Paladin we see Asta defeat, we can assume they're not dead unless confirmed otherwise, and any that are defeated by other people, we can assume that they are, because it seems like Asta is the only one that has the ability to negate the mind control. Which does leave hope that the Paladins currently fighting in the Judgment Day arc and any that could show up in the near future could potentially end up surviving. Except for Morris, he he can be the one that just doesn't make it. He can be the one that slips through the cracks and ends up dying regardless of Asta fights him or not. In fact, Tabata, I'm kind of begging you at this point, just please get rid of the character. Anyway, Black Clover is going on break next week alongside One Piece and My Hero, so we'll have to wait two weeks in order to find out the answer to whether or not this Paladin is down for the count. But Asa's first chapter back has already set up so much to be excited about, and I can't wait to see them play out in the upcoming chapters.